we're on the wrapping up part of this class, and I always, uh, most everybody has taken greenhouse management at some point, but I do need to talk a little bit about pest management strategies. And what I like to cover is uh, in this is a little bit about the equipment that we use in pest management. And the first, uh, probably the most common uh, piece of equipment people use is a high volume sprayer. Um, several different kinds of high volume sprayers, uh, just depends on how sophisticated you want to be. And understanding sprayer technology is important, whether, whether you're a conventional grower, organic grower, uh, pesticide free or anything like this, but you need to have some understanding of the technologies that are available to you. And here are some examples of what's common in the industry. I would think that um, this um, cold fog high volume sprayer down here, this is a manufactured by the Dram Company, probably one of the more common ones that you'll see. But you'll see everything from the high tech sprayers to the backpacks to the engine powered. Low volume spray um, technologies is um, also in the upswing in our technology. And when we talk about low volume versus high volume, low volume sprayers, just like it sounds, you're putting out a lower volume of fluid, lower volume of water. To make it work, you have to have a smaller droplet size, so you have to have a higher technology uh, sprayer. Um, one of the advantages of a low volume spray is because we're using it as a higher concentration, lower volume, we're actually using less pesticide, which makes it cheaper. Some of the lower, a lot of the lower, low volume spray systems use what's called an electrostatic spray, electros electrostatic charge. In other words, there's a technology in the, in the sprayer one that actually applies a charge to the molecule, to the pesticide molecule, making it stick better to either the insect or the surface you're being sprayed. It also includes mist application systems. So this is uh, what we call the Motan electrostatic spray system, and it's a low volume sprayer. Um, this is a, a pretty unique technology uh, in that it can be put on rollers or it can be permanently mounted in the greenhouse. Um, the small white bottle at the top of each one of these is where the pesticide goes. And then we have a, a, a mixing volume, which is a little larger, which is where the water goes. And um, the technology then mixes, blends the system and puts it, introduces it to the, to the blower fan, and then the fan fogs the whole greenhouse. Now, what's great about these particular devices is, like I said, this one on the right is permanently mounted, usually up in the gable of the greenhouse, is that these are typically set up to spray on a timer. You put it into the greenhouse, turn the fans off, and you can set it up to spray or to apply the pesticide when nobody is there. These are automatic. And they will s blow the pesticide throughout the greenhouse unattended. So there's low labor, low exposure to your employees, and, um, uh, and a very effective system. This is another electrostatic spray system um, that's uh, uh, more portable. It's, you've got your hose reel, got your, your sprayer tank, and it's got a high pressure sprayer system. Uh, the electrostatic sprayers, um, uh, what they do is the, the wand itself uses a, a air assist. It is a high pressure, high pressure air compressor that drives the spray through the nozzle to give it a small, small droplet size. So um, using a very small volume. The very first time I ever used one of these in one of the greenhouses I was working at before I moved to Colorado is um, the man that worked for me, the first time he used it, he told me that it was a piece of junk, that he would never use it again because it took him three days to spray five greenhouses. And I said, why? And he said, because he would run it and every five minutes, every five or 10 minutes, he'd have to refill the tank. Well, what he was doing is he was spraying this to drip because he didn't understand the concept of low volume, where you spray these just to l lightly glisten everything. One sprayer tank was enough to s treat the five greenhouses that he was working in, whereas he was using as three tanks per greenhouse. So he was just way overdoing it. He didn't understand. Um, 
the low volume. These are some other low volume applicators. This is a mist applicator. Um, it, the water containment system is up on top. It's got a little f fan. And you actually walk through the greenhouse, misting, this, uh, misting the greenhouse. Um, and it blows um, very low, uh, uses very low volume, but it puts out a lot of product. Now, this particular device, we're working with a pretty high concentration in there. So the risk is the handler is working with a higher concentration material. But as long as you're wearing the appropriate material, appropriate equipment, it's much more economical. One of the more common uh, low volume applications is aerosol. And we've all used spray cans, hairspray, pesticide sprays. It's a low volume application where we have a cylinder under pressure. Some of the modern um, uh, aerosol applications, um, they oftentimes are, it's a more expensive product, so they encapsulate the pesticide. By encapsulating the pesticide, uh, it protects the pesticide from the environment, so it lasts longer on the foliage, lasts longer, has more effective life. It's a delivering mechanism. The encapsulation may be charged, so it sticks to the leaf. The technology is set that it protects it from UV exposures and stuff like that. There's two different kinds of aerosols that we use. We have what's called a total release or a spot application. Total release is where we take the can, uh, the aerosol can, walk into the greenhouse, set it up, click the applicator, lock it into place, and it totally exhausts itself in one application. In other words, it fogs the greenhouse. We don't have a cockroach problem in, in Colorado, but if you lived in a place where you had a cockroach problem, that's the way you treat your apartment. So you go in there and you set this bomb off, and you can buy them any kind of a sort. Spot applications, this is basically a spray can, and it's commonly used in the interior scape market. I like spot application treatments. Aerosol application is more expensive because it's an expensive device. But in a spot application, you can take the pesticide, walk into a greenhouse, and if you have a small aphid outbreak, you can treat one or two plants. You don't have to treat the whole greenhouse. Much safer. However, you have to understand you still have to follow restricted entry interval regulations, even though you've only sprayed two or three plants, but the whole greenhouse has been treated. The other place where these spot application aerosol treatments is great is for the interior scape market. An interior scaper can use these. And in fact, if you look at the label on many of the Whitmire products that are designed for spot application, they're actually registered for use in areas of food application for interior scapes and restaurants. Very safe. So it's a good way, even though it's a more expensive product, it's an, a, a very inexpensive treatment just to treat isolated outbreaks where you don't have to treat the whole greenhouse. Thermal fog systems is an older technology that's been around for a long, long time where we use a pesticide that is an emulsifiable concentrate, an EC. It's an oil or xylols or something like this. N um, and we use a heat source to vaporize the pesticide. And there's only about two or three pesticides left that are not organophosphates uh, that we can apply this way. It's a low volume application. The greenhouse has to be very tight, but it's very effective and it gets in all the cracks and crevices of the greenhouse. And we need to use very serious personal protection uh, equipment if you're using a thermal fog application. And here's is a picture of a thermal fogger where it's a machine that's got uh, basically a firebox that's heating up this tube to um, vaporize the, the pesticide. Other thermal fog applications, um, they used, we used to have some products that we could uh, apply in a thermal fog and we just put it in, a, in a, an electric skillet and put it in the greenhouse and warm up the skillet and the skillet would heat up the, the pesticide and it would volatilize into the atmosphere. Uh, not so much a, a good practice anymore, especially if you don't set the skillet exactly right, it'll catch on fire. Um, Another very effective low volume application is smoke. And we have smoke generators. This used to be the, the, the easiest way to apply nicotine sulfate. And I don't believe nicotine sulfate is listed as an um, organic pesticide anymore. Um, but 
one of the things, just like the thermal fogging system, is we're burning the pesticide and it volatilizes into the atmosphere. Um, frankly, this is where I've had my own, own personal accidents is with thermal fogs, um, with the thermal smokes. Uh, one of the advantages is that some of the products are very, very, very low uh, mammalian toxicity. Nicotine sulfate is not one of those, but um, the uh, it's very phyto non, the phytotoxicity, because we're not spraying anything onto the foliage, it has lower phytotoxicity. One of the things that we discover when we see uh, burns from pesticides on our plants, it's not so much from the pesticide, but from the pesticide carrier. In fact, if we're using an emulsifiable concentrate, which is xylene and oils and such as that, when you're tank mixing, you can't tank mix more than one emulsifiable concentrate ever, and the reason why is because it's going to be phytotoxic, because you're getting a double dose of those uh, solvents. We put our application out according to the greenhouse volume, of course the ventilation system is good, needs to be off, and one of the things that the label doesn't tell you to do is to please, please, please call the fire department if you're smoking a greenhouse. Because if the smoke ekes out of the greenhouse, some passerby is going to come by and call 911 and say their greenhouse is on fire because it does come out. And this has happened recently in a greenhouse in the Cherry Creek area about five years ago. They smoked a greenhouse. Passerby called the fire department. The fire department came through and axed down the doors, stepped on the <coughs> restricted entry signs, walked in the greenhouse looking for the fire, took their protective equipment off. Next thing we know we have four firefighters in the hospital. Who is liable? Well, they're blaming the greenhouse for not adequately preparing the, the law enforcement officers. In fact, when I worked at another university, I did my phone call. I was spraying, applying a thermal fog, I mean a smoke, to with a very, very toxic pesticide. And I turned around, and there was a policeman watching me because he was curious to what I was doing. Of course, I'm wearing full protective gear with an oxygen supported mask and I'm telling woo, 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 get out of here you're gonna die but anyway so it works very well it gets in all the cracks and crevices uh, products some of the products like nicotine sulfate is so safe on biologicals that 24 hours after you've used it you can do a full biological release of my of your pet of your insects Another system of, um, is the volatilization of sulfur. And this is a sulfur pot um, where we can take elemental sulfur and vaporize it in the greenhouse. It's uh, very effective for powdery mildew control. Uh, very common. Um, I think some of you in the uh, other industries have probably seen these before because it's one of the few things that is legal for uh, pesticide application, for this kind of an application. Elemental sulfur vaporization is not considered a uh, pesticide because there's no label for it. It's considered a um, home remedy. So it's not covered by uh, EPA registrations. So um, one of the other things you can do to vaporize sulfur and one of the things that I have done is just take a, an aluminum <coughs> pan, put the elemental sulfur in and put it on the steam pipes. Don't put the elemental sulfur directly on the steam pipes because as it mixes with uh, the moisture in the air it, and as it volatilizes, it converts to sulfuric acid and will actually destroy your steam pipes or your copper pipes if you've got copper. And I understand there's a new technology where they're bubbling volatilized sulfur into water to acidify the water as an organic acidification treatment. But I haven't seen the technology yet basically making your own sulfuric acid. So it's still chemistry. So. Okay. Little something on technology. Do you guys use sulfur burners? Yes. 